If you enjoy Excel challenges, you really should visit this blog, excelxor.com. Some amazing challenges in here. Let's look at one of them over here in Excel. So we have this grid, and we, what we want to do is extract all the non-blanks, and we want to list them in a single column. So there's two ways to do this. We could go by the column, extract them this way, all the way across, or we could extract them by the rows, going like this. So there's these two different ways to do it. Let's go and look at the solutions from Excelor briefly. Uh, here's the formula for extracting it by row. We see it down here. This, this is the formula text. Go into this cell and uh, we'll see how he does it here. I won't explain the whole thing. You'll have to get this file and uh, use the F9 key to highlight certain parts. But basically, this part is just saying, hey, if we've already extracted everything we want, then just put a blank. Else, we want to do uh, the, the long formula here to, to display all of these and extract them in either by column or by row. Now, this one, uh, I think there was only one solution posted by the people that follow his blog. Uh, it seems to be quite more, uh, quite a bit more difficult um, to extract them in this way by column, which is the slices. Now, uh, the thing is, I found a different way to do it, uh, but it kind of breaks the rules a little bit of the challenge because I do use helper columns, but it's a little, it's definitely easier to understand. Anyways, let's uh, look at the first part. We have to add a counter. You can just type one, two, three, drag it down, or we could use a uh, row function to, to create this. Next step would be this. This is the, the only part of the form of the, of the solu my solution that is a little bit, uh, takes some time to understand, but basically what we're saying, here's our condition. The, the values in here that are not blank, what we want to do is take both the column number and the row number. And I do that by saying, give me the column number and then add. So this this will be an integer. So the column numbers are basically integers in there. This corresponds to A, B, C, D. And then what we want to do is say, plus take the row numbers as a decimal. Because we can't just take the column number and the row number added together. It wouldn't make any sense. But here, if I highlight this part and press the F9 key, we see that the row numbers are decimals. So now we have, as you see in here, we're just extracting them one by one. We're using the small function to say, OK, we've got these things in here. Uh, if I press the F9 key, they're either, if we want to pull the value, we see the integer and the decimal. Otherwise, if we don't care about it because it's a blank, we see this double quote. So then the small function just extracts, extracts them one by one and displays them. That's how that works. And then the next step is to just take the integer of this, which is going to be our column number all the way down. It ignores the decimal. And the opposite of that, we want to show the decimal. So here we get the 1 from here, and we get the 3 from here all the way down. Relatively simple formula to do that. Next, we are going to um, just display them. Very simple index. Just index the original area. We have to give it a row number and a column number, which is simply what we see here. And that's all it is. Now, let's continue and show you how to do it the other way, by row. So instead of here, we did it by column, like this. So we see the, the K, 7, 11, X. But now we want to do it by row, which is going this way, like that. Very similar, but a little bit different. So I come up with a way that I can use the same thing. All I'm going to do is switch these two around. So over here, we had a column and row. But now we've got row and column. It's the column that's the decimal, because the column numbers are divided by 1,000. Uh, so I did this a long time ago, several years ago. There was actually a case for this I had once. But anyways, let's go to row number. And here we see I'm doing the same kind of thing, just extracting the integer, what's to the left of the decimal. Over here now, the next step is to say, OK, just take this the decimal portion, but get rid of the zeros, one, two, four, one, two, four, and all the way down. And of course, at the very end, we have the same thing, which is the index function to extract it out of here. We have two things we need. This is two dimensional, and so we have to give it two numbers, which row and which column. So you also see how here it's column and row, and here it's row and column. Now, going back to Excel XOR's website, 
there's a really good part that he wrote about making these formulas efficient. This is just a test. What we have here is a small little area. It, it doesn't matter that we're getting these errors, um, but what, what happens if it's a much bigger area and we're dragging this down hundreds or thousands of rows? We have to be very careful with these array formulas because they are heavier to calculate. So, uh, Excel XOR, he already, they already have this counter thing here to tell it to stop, but I don't have that yet in my solution. So let's go over to here and I'll just show you how we can add that. You, you want to definitely resist the urge to wrap the whole thing with if error because it still has to calculate it to determine down here, oh, okay, there's no more. There's only uh, 13 values to extract out of here. Don't do the formula. So we don't want to wrap the whole thing with if error. All we need to do is get some kind of a counter. I'm going to go over to the off to the side of the screen. I'm going to take this little counter. I'm going to cut it and move it back over here. I'm going to paste it in that cell. This is just a dynamic way to say, hey, we, we've got 13 values in here. And once we get past 13, we don't want to even consider doing any of these formulas, and especially the array. There's no need to, uh, to calculate this. So we'll quickly go in here and say, if the 13, or no, actually, if the counter value, and I'm just going to lock that. I guess I don't really have to, but if it's greater than the 13, I'm going to lock that one. Simply put a blank. We're not even going to do the array. Else, continue. Go to the end and Control Shift Enter. Now I'm going to drag this down. We'll see these errors disappear, and they're gone. Now, I guess we could also do the same thing for the rest of these. And to make it even lighter, you know what we can do? I don't have to really calculate this again. It's very, very light, but let's just do this. If this equals blank, then blank, comma, and press Enter. One more time, and just drag it down. So that works well, and we can just take this, copy it, go over here, and just paste it. Drag it down. And then one more time, why not? Why not do it over here as well? So these columns will not even calculate, and the array over here won't calculate. Go over here, because you always want to give the formula a chance to do nothing, just to cancel it, uh, because why have it calculate when there's just no purpose at all? So uh, we, we'll, we'll do the same thing over here, but it's, it's basically uh, what we've got here. Now, notice how this counter is not dynamic. Sometimes there's a, re a good reason to make it dynamic, and other times the best thing is just to say one, two, three, drag it down a ways. Um, this is about all we have to do. So once again, visit his website. I've got the links down here, the source links for where I found this challenge. It's so much you can learn by trying to solve it or by studying the solutions.